Hello, welcome to the video. Today I want to talk about two um, small devices, uh, ZX Unos. Um, I fitted this myself to that, so we'll get to that in a minute. So, yeah, these are an FPGA, much like a Mist or a Mister, except uh, they're very much cost reduced. So, this particular one, the ZX Uno, um, I think you could get it originally for 40 quid. So it's, it's not really expensive. Uh, I've had this one quite a few years. This one came cased and everything. So yeah, it's uh, a nice little unit. It's about the size of a Raspberry Pi. And that's deliberate. Um, I fitted my own um, RGB connector here, which I've still got a bolt in, but yeah. So as you can see, it's got one joystick port, a PS2 mouse port, um, composite, audio port. There's an expansion header here. Um, they're usually for 2 meg of SD RAM and that's what these use um, this particular one's got 512k of SD RAM and an FPGA so you can see inside there's not, not really a lot to this so yeah now this is the, the later model it looks much nicer it's got two joystick ports uh, power switch it's already got the um, VGA port built in uh, audio out power um, an ear connector and I'll explain why in a minute uh, keyboard connector same PS2 uh, SD card slot and some function buttons so yeah this is exactly the same as this with the addition of an extra joystick port and more memory so this one's actually got two megabytes of SD RAM but functionally they're the same same bit of kit so yeah so with these machines you can do similar sort of things to the Mist. You can load up cores and play different cores on. I believe the original inception for these was to be a Spectrum. Um, and that core is the most advanced by a mile. So yeah, they both run very nice uh, Spectrum cores that can use SD cards. And yeah, it's a nice all round uh, recreation of a Spectrum. And you can have different versions, a 128 even. I think even some of the more exotic clones like the Pentagon and stuff. This one can hold 7 ROMs in its flash memory. And this one I think can hold 42. Um, yeah, so you can, you've got all these different cores. Um, some of them are not as mature as what you might find with a Mist or a Mister. Um, well, nowhere near it. Uh, and others are really good. So for Spectrum, this is really good. It's a really good uh, set of cores on there. And that's probably the most advanced. I think the um, BBC core is pretty good. The Atari 800 core is very good. That can also load from the SD card. Um, there's an Amstrad core on here, but I'm not a big Amstrad lover, so I've not really given that too much look. Um, but the big one is the C64 core. That is, um, well, to be honest, you're probably better off using a, an emulator. Um, that's not very advanced. It can't load from the SD card because you don't have the amount of logic cells on the FPGA. Um, the SID implementation's quite weak. Um, and yeah, it, it's quite an old core and it hasn't been updated in a long time. But it doesn't mean that these are not good. I mean, you can still load tape games into it. You go through the ear socket, load it in and it'll play on a 64 core. You can, all, of course, do that with the other cores as well. But yeah, let's, um, let's get set up and fire it up and uh, show you what they can do. Okay, so let's take a look at the uh, ZX Uno. Um, if I start it up, we'll press F2. And it goes into like a, a BIOS type screen where you can set up certain things and do tests. Under ROMs, it shows you which ROMs are installed in which slot. So if we if we go to here, for example, you, you can see there's a whole lot of ZX Spectrum stuff. ZX80, ZX81, Jupiter Ace. Um, 
Now if we go to boot, these are the actual cores that are in here. So as you can see, we've got ZX Spectrum, 6128 Amstrad, MSX, Commodore 64, BBC Micro, uh, VIC-20, uh, XT, PC, uh, iCatmos, yeah, there's, there's a whole load on this one. As you can see here, we can go down to the bottom. So, yeah, it's it's pretty full-featured um, for just a, a little small uh, FPGA. So if we go up to, for example, the X Spectrum, we can select that, save changes and exit. And you can see here that we boot into ESX DOS. Now you might be able to see some interference going down the screen. And that's a similar problem to what I had with the Atari 2600. And it's because I'm using a switch mode power supply with it. It really needs a regulated supply and you won't get this interference. So, yeah. Um, I'm not quite sure how to load in the... Um, ah, there you go. F4. So let's have a look. Not overly familiar with the ZX part of it, so... We've got a ZX81 Spectrum Games uh, <laughs> Manic Miner, there you go Straight in No messing around Sounds just as good as it does on a real Spectrum <laughs> Now, jokes aside, it is a really good recreation of it. Here we go. Yeah, it's a shame about that noise in the background, but you can It is a lot better with a better power supply. Thing is, it's using a micro USB, and. You know, they're not linear. All the ones you can buy are um, regular sort of switches. There we go, look at that. Straight on the bush. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it's uh, the Spectrum is, is a really good recreation. And you can go back and pick another game and... Boom, straight in. There's just no messing around. The Spectrum Core in here is, is probably the most feature complete and it is pretty damn good. Um, something like that. Okay. Um, I don't know which one. Ah. Let's have a look at I mean M, right? So if I Go home. No, there we go. There was um, no to yes on. I think I had 128k music. I don't know if it's the 128k version. Probably not. No, definitely not. There we go. Internet lives. Nomad. So, let's give it a, a reboot and choose a different core. MSX. Well, well, let's do, let's do the Amstrad. Ah, well, there you go. It's uh, it's very blue. Um, down it. Disk menu. Insert a disk. Cool. Oh, 
Alright. Don't know. Ah, <laughs> oh, there you go. Let's try um, Arkanoid 2. Back, exit. Um, what is this on a cat? Oh, right, okay. Uh, I'm not sure if this is right. Yes, it is. There we go. And the light, you can't see it, but on the top of the unit itself, the light is flashing as it does it. Wait, step. Still might this yes, is a bit difficult, isn't it? Cinderella running away from the ball. Well, there you go. Amstrad can load from. Um, SD card. Oh, what kind of hit detection is that? Yeah, let, let, let's get back into the bar, shall we? Right, let's go to boot. Let's try MSX. Now, some games... Um, will only work at VGA, so they won't show up on the TV. Um, yeah. Fat file system not found. Really? Well, there you go. It seems that the MSX needs a very particular file system for that. Give that one a skip. Let's try the uh, BBC Micro. <coughs> oh, look at that, straight in. It's got an MMFS, so it's got a, it's got the ROM that get loads from an MMC card. Um, I need to find what is the brake key. Not that one. On that one. Disk number not valid. Right. Try star boot. Oh man. Oh, there's a star. Keyboard layout's a bit different. Nope. No, it's not liking that. So F12 is reset. So to get it into MMC mode. I forget how you boot it. Normally it's shift brake. Um, if brake is F12. Oh, no disc. I don't know why that's not booting. 
Um, I've not tried that on here before. May, maybe there's no um, MMC. It says it's there. No. No disc. Mm -hmm. Well, that was short lived. It does work though. There we go. Right. So let's try that one. Atari 800 XL. <coughs> there we go. It's quite easy to see the, the interference rolling down the screen now. So on here, oh there we go. We can pick a game. Um, Go. Let's try it oh, Arkanoid. So it's loading just like it would on a actual machine. I've picked an ATR disc image, um, but you can also load cartridges, no problem. In fact, <coughs> most of the time, uh, when I've used the ZX Uno, it has been for Atari. Um, right, so keyboard. And then option, which oh, there it is. Look at that. Don't that look a bit pants? Anyway, so you can pick another game. Let's say we pick um, Seminole Classic, Monty Zuma. Loading. Still loading. <laughs> you can see there's um you won't be able to see it on the video, but there's a red red LED guy next to the SD card. That also works properly in the Amstrad core. So here we go. Now this is what would happen if you loaded it on a real Atari. That's uh yeah, it's not quite right. So some games require you to knock off basic while you're loading. So if we pick that game again, uh, Monty Zuma's Revenge, but this time we're going to knock off basic with F8. We're going to hold F8 down. Now I believe you need to do this on a real machine as well. As you can see, um, it's loaded properly that time. So yeah, so that was just a quick overview of the ZX Uno. Um, it's a lovely little machine. It can do a few machines really well. It's got a few arcade cores on there. Um, and you can pick them up really cheap. It's, it's a good intro, if, you know, if you want to FPGA. I wouldn't really bother with a 64 core, it's not all that great. But the others are quite good. I think um, once the proper MMC file was hooked up to the BBC, that would be good as well. But this one is, is really good. So yeah, so uh, don't forget to check out my compadres in the uh, Retro Repairers group. The links will be in the description. And uh, thanks for watching.